Today, watch as I take this broken bed from broken to fantastic. So stay tuned and see how we go about fixing those little mishaps. Okay, at the miniature show last week, I was given this bed. It was it had belonged to a, a friend of mine that used to have a shop and she was closing out her merchandise. And this little bed, all the parts are here, but it had an accident. And I thought, wow, I could do a video with this. So she and I talked and she said, just take it. Just it's a gift. So I've got a free bed. And it's very likely that you you know, that this is going to happen to you at some point. You're going to have a piece of furniture that either gets broken in storage or maybe you come across it at a garage sale and it's in one of those free boxes or whatever. Let me show you how to fix this. And it's really pretty simple. So let's look at what we've got here. I've got the bed and I've got all the parts. I've got the leg that goes on here, and I've got the, the posts that go on top. And these are made to be removable. I think we're going to glue them in so that they look nicer. But first, we need to fix this. So to do that, I'm going to use my normal fast grab tacky. I've got a tile over here, like always, to put the glue on. And I've also got my super glue. I still haven't been able to find Zappa Gap, but I've been using this um, Loctite Professional Liquid Super Glue, and I'm, it's okay. It's um, It's been the best one I can find so far, and I like it's in a bigger bottle, so I don't run out quite as fast as with those little tiny bottles of super glue that you get sometimes. And this, I think I actually got this at Walmart, so it's pretty easy to find, too. It's right there with the glues in the craft section. So I'm putting glue, and by the way, I'm not just going to show you how to fix this. I'm going to show you how to dress the bed, one way of dressing the bed. I, I do beds in different ways, and we're going to dress this bed and make it look really nice. So I'm going to put a nice coat of glue on here. I've already dry fit it, so I know it's going to fit. And now I'm going to put some of our super glue, just a drop on each of these two surfaces, the footboard and the sideboard. That way it will hold. Now, take that, line that hole back up, and I glue on this glue. Now double check where, because you can tell that the board that was broken off had no finish. You know, it was bare wood there where it had been glued. I'm going to wipe away some of this excess glue. And now, obviously, this will need to dry. Oh, let's go ahead and, well, first let's make sure it sits, yep, it sits straight. And I think I'm going to actually glue these on after I dress the bed because sometimes when you glue these on and then you try to dress the bed, you end up breaking things. So these we'll leave until later. So I'm going to put them back in their little plastic bag, and I'll put them with the mattress. And when this is dry, we'll uh, clean up the rest of that glue, and we'll get started on dressing the bed. All right, so the bed is all fixed. It's nice and sturdy. And there's really not much glue to clean up because um, it's all going to be covered. So now we need to look at what are we going to do to dress this bed. When I dress a bed, I generally, depending on the scene it's going in, I use between three and five color fabrics. Either three or five. I like to stay with an odd number. I like to pick out a print first. I was going through my stash and I found this one. I always like using this one on beds. I think this is really pretty. It's a nice small all over design. You do need to make sure that your fabrics are in scale, that your designs are in scale. Um, so that's where I started with this. And then as I looked through my fabric stash, at first I looked at the colors. Well, I've got this really pretty kind of a bluish green. I've got an off-white background. 
and I've got purple, and I've got red, and I've got pink. Well, the next fabric I found was this really pretty dark green, and it's in that same bluish green family. So I like that. I'm not going to use a lot of it, but I'm going to use some of that. And then I found this really deep purple. And I like to use a couple of dark colors and then the rest light. And I like this dark purple. I think, especially with the dark wood, I think the combination is going to be really pretty. Now we need to lighten it up. Well, we can't get much lighter than off-white. And this is a white-on-white -white type print. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but this is a like an off-white fabric with like a very small white leaf design. So in person it almost looks like it's got a lace over the fabric. It's very pretty and it works really well here. For our fifth fabric, I chose this kind of pale purple. This will be really nice. It'll set off the other colors. And so I'm just about ready to get started. Oh, and the other thing I chose I decided this bed is going to have a lace bed skirt. And for the lace bed skirt, I have this piece of gathered lace. Now, it's just lightly gathered. It's, it's not one of those ones that's really scrunched up and really full. It's, it's barely gathered, just, just the tiniest bit. And a lot of people might even think it's a flat lace, but it's not. It's got a little gathering to it. It's, let's see, where's my ruler? I measured against the bed. I haven't actually measured it yet. It's, um, it's an inch and a half wide, but that's because we are going to be running it so it sticks out. And I'm going to glue it right here. I'm going to line it up with the top of the foot of the bed here, of the boards. And uh, that'll be really nice. So let me get uh, set up and get started, and I'll show you how we go about doing this. All right, we don't need to use a special fabric glue or anything for this project because it's really not going to show. So what we need to do is I'm going to cut this, and I actually cut it just a little bit long, and after it's glued on, then I cut it to size. And I just use a regular tacky glue. Because the fabric is really porous, the lace is real porous, it will stick to the wood even though there's finish on it. Now the biggest trick is making sure you look at your lace because on I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but on this side of the lace there is extra detail. This is the back side, this is the front side. So we want to make sure that we put that side out all the way down. Like I said, I cut this a little long because we are going to trim it off after the glue sets up. So Go ahead and do the other side first. Now, if the design on your lace is um, more definite, you know, more pronounced, you might want to center a motif on your the side of your bed, depending on the scene you're putting it in. This one, I think it's more of an overall pattern. It's not that big a deal. But I had a really cool one one time that there was only, I think three of the motifs going down the front, the side. Okay. Again, making sure we have the right side out. Lining the top of our lace up with the top of the wood and press down. And try and keep it straight. Now, we'll do the same thing on the end. Off there. 
And again, right side out. And we let it dry. So now the glue just has to dry completely. I'm actually going to probably let this set overnight and it'll probably be tomorrow morning when I go on to the next step because I want that glue completely dry. However, I will come back in about, oh, 20 minutes to a half hour and double check that my lace is staying straight and that all the corners are down. Um, because sometimes it tends to lift up, I find, especially lace tends to lift up when I'm gluing it. So when this is dry, I will show you how to do the trimming. Alright, so this is now set overnight. Mattress off, get it out of my way. Now I want to very carefully, and I like to use fairly small scissors for this because I can get in closer and just cut up and just make a nice straight cut at each of these spots where the lace meets the leg. And I'll finish this up and then we are moving to the sewing machine to make some bedding for this bed. Alright, so we're at the sewing machine and I've done a few things ahead of time. I made a pattern. And what I did for my pattern, I just drew the, the size of the mattress, how far I wanted the drop on the sides, and then a seam allowance. And I've got, and I cut out these squares on the corners so that it can go around the posts on the bed because this bed has it's going to have to come around. So this is pretty simple. I've cut it out of two layers, the color for the top and then the the white on white print. And I've went ahead and folded under my quarter inch seam allowance on the top edge. This of course is the edge that will go along the headboard. So I'm going to pre-fold that and leave it folded. So we need to take it off the pattern. And since I cut these out right sides to right sides, I can leave them, they'll stay that way pretty well. And I want to pin this a couple of places on each edge. And I'm going to do these side edges first. Pins here. And since I'm starting sewing right at the edge of my fabric, I have just a little scrap of fabric here. And this can be, you know, an odd odds and ends of fabric you've got, it's fine to use for this. Alright, so now we're going to run this piece of fabric through. I like to do this because this gives me some place to anchor. I'm just using a normal stitch, normal stitch length, normal stitch. I get right up to the edge of this and then I can butt this fabric up. Don't overlap it, but just butt it right up against and this allows me to, to sew right onto that narrow seam allowance without ending up with problems. Because sometimes the sewing machine will suck that piece of fabric down into the feed dogs and cause a mess for you. And I'm not even bothering to to uh, knot the ends of my thread at the ends of the seam because I'm going to be crossing this and I'm also going to cut the corners off. Now, cut our little piece here off and put it back through the sewing machine. And once again, we'll butt right up against it. If I didn't do that, it would try to pull the fabric down. So I do this anytime I'm sewing, especially sewing narrow seam allowance or starting right at the edge like this.
Now if this was going to be played with by a small child, I would probably then knot the ends of my stitching, but it's not, this is just a display, so this isn't a toy, so. It's ready for the next seam I'm going to do. Now I'm going to put You know, some pinning on both sides because I'm working towards the middle. Now I'm going to sew here and along that little L, that little cutout part. And you have to kind of watch, you have to kind of figure out. I'm going to set my machine so that it stops with the needle down. Because I need to figure out, yeah, perfect, when I'm a quarter inch away from this edge. By sewing, and now we could have just started at one side and went all the way around. The problem with that is sometimes when you do that, you end up being a little bit crooked. You can kind of knock your, your fabric will kind of not lay together quite right. And any little mistake on each side gets magnified really badly by the time you're done. So on small pieces like this, I prefer to do, just do small amounts of sewing at a time. one more seam to do. And this one I won't even pin for. But I do want to make sure my pins are out from the back. Now we just sew this narrow end at the foot. There. Now that's all the sewing there is to this one for right now. We need to turn it now. My machine. Now I need to pay attention to where my stitching is. I want to cut off my corners, but I don't want to cut through the end stitching. And I want to cut right up to the stitching on those corners. This is probably incredibly hard to see the stitching on this because it's white thread on white fabric. Now we'll move over to the ironing board and we'll turn this right side out. Alright, so I have my iron preheated. I'm going to press this edge, this folded edge down because it came up a little bit. And one thing I like to do is I always press my seams the way they're sewn. It kind of sets, kind of sets the uh, stitching down into the fabric and it makes it stay a lot better. And we've left a nice big opening here. If you wanted to make this look more poofy, you could put a piece of flannel inside of it. Um, I chose not to do that on this one. I'm going to show you how to make this lay down flat on the bed using some spray starch today. There's other ways to do this. Of course, you could have added lace to your edges here if you wanted to. That would have been fine. scissors to get this out. Now, I need to go get something and I'll be right back. Alright, this is just a piece of fusible webbing. This is the paperback kind. I couldn't find my piece that I thought I had that wasn't paperbacked. 
I just cut a narrow strip. Now we'll press this in there, which will adhere it to the one side. Now. Peel the paper backing off. Make sure this is laying exactly the way you want it. There. Now the end is seen. All right, so we've got the bed here. We've got the, the bedspread we made. So we've got the mattress down on the bed. And on this bed, there's really only this amount of space that you can pin into. But we've got an ironing board here. We can pin into this. So we lay this on, if it's just the way I wanted it to. And I start out by taking my pins, and I pin in to the mattress. And I do both sides. And I do at least three on each of the long sides. Probably I'll go back and do yeah, that's probably enough for that side, for that part. Now I'm doing the same thing on the foot, but I'm only going to use two here. These pins are going to come out when we're all done. Now, we need to pin the bottom down. So, is that kind of a spot in my ironing board that I can go through? There we go. I'll go up on this side. I'm doing the same thing on both sides. Pins here. And at this stage, you really can't pin too much because this is going to help you to control this fabric. Now this bed is meant to be dressed and then just displayed. It's not meant to have the bedding come off, but at the same time, I don't like to glue my bedding on. All right, so this is just a can of spray starch, whatever brand you have. You buy it near the laundry soap. Shake the can, and we're going to spray. Now steam it. And this needs to set until it's completely dry. If you've got a really extensive bed, I would recommend that you cover the um, wood parts of the bed and don't do this on a plastic bed. <laughs> if you're going to use a bed that can't stand up to the heat, then just spray it with starch and let it sit till it's dry. It doesn't need the steam iron, but it will make it better. So this now just needs to sit until it's completely dry, and then I'll be back. And that'll take as much wet as I got on here. That will take uh, probably an hour or two at least. So I'll see you then. All right, this has been sitting overnight, so it's completely dry. And now it's time to pull out our pins. Remember how the, um, the bedding was sticking out before, and now it's not. Now there will be some little crumbles of, um, of the um, gray starch on there, and we can just kind of shake those off here in a second. Now one of the reasons I don't glue on, I don't know if I, I, know if I talked about this earlier or not, is I, I might change my mind about how I want this bed done. And it's much easier to redo the bed if it's not glued on. And all I've got to do is just get it wet again, rinse out the spray starch, and I can start all over. So now, let's make a couple of pillows to put on the bed. So let's move over to the sewing machine. 
All right, to prepare, I've cut just a strip of fabric with a straight edge. Uh, this measurement doesn't really matter yet. Um, and this side was a straight line, straight edge, and I folded over um, and made a, a double hem. I folded, folded over a half inch. I folded the raw edge up to meet the half inch fold, and then I folded that. So let's sew this hem down. For this, I don't want my quarter inch foot because my quarter inch foot won't give me enough space. So I'm going to put just a regular foot back on. Again, we're using just a standard plain stitch on our fabric. And I need just a little piece of scrap fabric to run under the foot. Now this is that same white on white, kind of off white on off white fabric that we used for the bottom side of the quilt. I'm using this because I think it'll be pretty up against the headboard on the bed. And these will represent your pillows, like your bed pillows, like your, um, your pillows that match your sheets. I'm just making a nice hem here, a nice finished edge. You know how there's almost always kind of a wide edge. Pick your seam, your seam size and be consistent all the way down. All right now I need to take my pillows. Now these are some pillows I made. They're made the same way pretty much as the other pillows we're going to make. And I'll show you how to make a pillow here in just a minute. But what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm keeping this right side out or the good side out. I'm going to roll this. I'm going back to my quarter inch foot. So I make a nice quarter inch seam, and I want to make sure I have about a quarter inch on there. I'll take my pillow out. All right, so I think we're lined up. Here's my edge of my fabric. I've got this held in place. I don't need to pin this because it's a straight line. I don't need the back stitch on that end. I mean it carefully. And I'm going kind of slow here. I don't want to go very fast because I don't want to um, make any mistakes. Now I'm going to go up to the edge. And because there's not going to be seams going across this, I'm going to back up. And I'm actually going to tie my thread off there by stitching in place with my machine, and that locks the stitches. Now, I will do the same thing to make the second pillow, and then I'll be back. All right, now they're, all, they're both sewn. So I'm just going to cut even with that. Now we have two tubes, and I'm going to try my pillow. I want it to be a little loose for my pillow, but because pillows are soft, you know, they'll go, yeah, that's going to fit. It's going to be nice and full. I do need to stuff my pillow in, though, because I need to figure out how long I want to make my pillowcases. And what I do is I do one, and then I use it to measure the other one. This out so I can feel the inside. I've got my pillow in my pillowcase. I want it to just barely come to the end, and I can feel the end of my pillow with my fingers. So I'm going to pin just past that point and pull my pillow out now. I am going to use this one to measure this one. Now remember, these are still wrong side out. The good side of the fabric is still inside. All our seams will be on the inside when we turn our fabric. Let's move the sewing machine back over. I'll use this little piece that I just cut off to hold my stitches. Like I said before, this keeps us from sucking our fabric. I know, actually, 
that was a mistake because I need to change foot again. I don't want a quarter inch seam now. I want a regular seam. And when I'm working with really small stuff, I like to use this clear foot when I'm working with the anything doll size, whether it's I sew a lot of 18 inch doll stuff and some Barbie stuff too. Um, I've sold some of those two sizes in the past. And then I also used to sew doll clothes for my daughter when her when she was little and still playing with dolls. And I find that by using the clear foot, I can see what I'm doing. Let's see if I can get the sewing machine open. Let's see if I can tell you all that now. See, now I've got the clear foot on. Put a little piece of fabric in there. Now we are going to line the foot up. There's an arrow on my sewing machine foot right there, and it's in line with the needle. And I'm lining this pin, then I'm marking where I want my seam to be up with that little arrow. And as I come to it, I am going to pull my pin back. This is just helping me to stay straight. I forgot to backstitch. I have a product called Fray Check. This will help prevent our stitches. Just put a drop, since I forgot to backstitch, just a tiny drop where we want our stitching to stay. Since this won't be played with, it's not as big a deal anyway. There. And that just takes a second to dry these apart, being very careful not to cut, cut the pillowcases, and cut myself approximately a quarter inch seam allowance, and cut across, oops, still a little on the damp side, again, cut across, leave our seam allowance, and cut here. Now, to make it look a little nicer at this end, we are going to cut this back. This is our finished edge. And we're going to use our fray check here too. That will make this look a little more finished. It'll keep it from fraying out. Of my scissors, keep them closed. Just use those to kind of make those corners come out. All right, so we're just going to continue. And we just continue turning. Now, if you want to, you can press this. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Now my pillows, because these are just going to be stuffed in, I didn't do a nice finished edge on that end, so that non-finished edge, where I just kind of sewed it together on the machine, will go in there. And you do have to fiddle a bit, but I want it to come in. There's my other pillow. Now we have nice looking bed pillows. I'll go get the bed and we'll look and see how these look on the bed. Alright, so here's the bed. 
And here's our first row of pillows. Now I like to keep the seam side down towards the bed when I lay these pillows on. And there. That makes a nice contrast against the headboard. If you don't get this one perfectly straight, that's okay because we're going to cover that. So now we have some more colors of fabric. For the next row, I like to use the bed spread color for the next row. So we're going to take this fabric and make some square pillows. And then we'll choose one of the darker colors, probably the green one, to make some pillows slightly smaller than those. And I'll show you on one set of pillows and then I'll just make the rest of the pillows and show you how it looks when it's finished. And then we'll use the final dark color to make a long round pillow. So let me get set up to cut out our square pillows. Alright, I've got two pieces of fabric cut for my pillows. It's two and a half by this way by five this way. I'm going to fold it in half and we need to leave an opening at one side, um, some place on the pillow to turn it. I'm going to leave this space right here. Oops, right here. We are going to pin our pillows. And we'll need I want the quarter inch foot back on my sewing machine. So put that back on. And so I get the sewing machine set up so that you can see it. Okay. We are going to come on to the fabric. And I'm actually going to do a locking stitch right here. That way I know it will stay. And I'm going to have my machine stop with the foot with the uh, needle down. I have my pin set so that I didn't actually run over the tip of that one. I just ran up kind of around it and past the point. Now, we're going to start checking where we are. And that puts me in the corner. Be sure that you're going to be in the corner and you're going to have a straight corner, a nice square edge there. And we need to do the same thing on this corner. Check it there. Yeah. Now, I put this pin in the other way. I did that for a reason. This is to remind me that when I start coming up to that pin, I need to stop. Because if I don't stop there, if I go all the way at the end, I won't be able to turn this over, turn this the right way. Okay. Now, we'll do the other pillow. Okay, one done. Let's sew number two. Get ready to sew. Put this on. Make sure we are actually into the fabric. Do a locking stitch and go towards the corner. down. Now we're at the corner. Because I've got the quarter inch foot, it's easy for me to tell when I've reached the corner, when I'm in the right spot to go. And if you know your sewing machine pretty well, you'll start to know when you are in the right spot. And these are just little pillows. It's not a big deal. And once again, we leave our opening. Our stitches. All right. Now get the sewing machine out of our way. Now I need to trim pretty close to the stitching, which of course is white thread on white fabric, so it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to go just as close to that as I can, and I'm even going to do this one, but not as much. Ok, 
Okay, now we turn this. Where's the camera? And I like to have a pencil. To do this with, to get started with. Now we have to decide what we are stuffing our pillows with. Since I want these to be nice fluffy bed pillows, I will be stuffing it with a cotton ball. If I wanted this to be a flatter pillow that's maybe more worn, then I would probably put just a little bit of cotton and then mostly sand in it. And I'll show you that sometime on another video, how to make pillows that really fl fall down like someone's been laying on them. But for today, we're just going to make simple pillows stuffed with cotton. And I chose cotton balls today because they're easy to get. Even if you don't sew a lot, make a lot of stuff with regular stuffing, you probably have a cotton ball. Now you could have sewed this by hand. If you're really patient, you could have used a needle and thread, and you could have sewed, sewn this with a needle and thread. You could do this all, and you could do it with glue if you're really careful. I don't, I find it gets a little stiff then, even with the fabric glue. So let me, I'm gonna go actually press this with the iron, and then I'll be back with some cotton, and these all pressed, and I'll show you how to finish them. All right, so I've got my pillows pressed, and um, now I've got to find the opening again. And now I've got some cotton balls. And I don't want to put them in full like they come. I need to pull them apart and put in just a little at a time. Probably should have brought my tweezers, but I don't have them here, so we're going to do this with fingers. And maybe the end of that pencil. In the first place, we're going to actually use this, kind of work this in. We don't want it too full. We don't want this to look like this, you know, really, really fluffy, because that will not look real. Pillows are not made like that in real life there. They flatten out a little. And we're kind of working it up in the corner. And I brought several cotton balls because I don't know how many it's going to take. And kind of scrunch it around. I think I need about half a cotton ball more. I want a little fluffier than that, but not not a full cotton ball worth, I don't think. Let's see if I can get this in here. There. That's about right. So now I need to go get a needle and thread, and I'll show you how to sew the end together. All right, now I have a hand sewing needle 
it's got a piece of thread through and it's tied at the end. I am going to bring that up inside. I want the knot, the knot in the thread to be on the inside of the pillow, not on the outside. So I come up through, see if I can do this and be able to see it and have the camera still see it. Go there. Now I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to come up just a little ways up. This is just one way. There are several ways to do this. If you have another way that you're comfortable with. I just want to hide my stitches as much as possible. And again, since this is not a toy, it doesn't need to be as secure as it would if a small child was going to play with it. Because these pillows are not going to be played with. They're going to be laid on the bed, and that's going to be it. And you could probably glue this shut if you really don't want to sew it by hand. See if I can do this in one step without. There. When I get to the end, I'll make pull that through all the way. Stitch through, put my needle through my loop, and that will tie it off. I'll cut this close. And now we have a pillow. So I'll do the same thing with this one. And then I am going to actually do the same thing slightly smaller in this dark green. And then in the pale purple each size a little smaller and then I'll come back and show you how to do a fun pillow for the very end of the for the very top out of the dark purple. All right, for our final um, pillow, we are going to we won't even need any sewing. This one is completely glued. This is a piece of 7 16th 7 16th of an inch dowel. And this I cut the fabric here 5 inches long by about 2 inches wide. And I need to get some glue out. I've just got some regular tacky glue. Hopefully the lighting's okay. I'm still at the sewing machine because I want I've got to use my scissors and stuff. We're just going to roll this up. And we are going to put glue. All along here. Try and make it just where the um, wood is, though. All right. And we are going to cut off. This is way too long yet, but we're doing this because this will make it easier to get it right. Now I have some white, just plain white embroidery floss. Ready to find the end. Where is the end? There's the end. And this is here. I'm going kind to of twist this around, not letting it get out of here. And I am attempting to tie this in a knot. And I don't usually do a bow because, but you can if you want. You can either do just a square knot or a bow, it doesn't matter. I'm actually going to do a quilter's knot or a surgeon's knot where you go through twice on that one. I'm going to leave those long for right now. Now, it's that thread. Now we'll go around. Got that far in. 
right, so we're just going to tie it around and try and snug it up against the end of that piece of dowel. And I'm just using that size because that's what I had. You can use anything around that size, around, you know, anything from about 3 eighths of an inch to 5 eighths of an inch probably would work. And by wrapping the fabric around a couple of times, it softened the uh, ends of the wood a little bit. So it doesn't look quite so much like wood. Now, I'm going to cut my ends off about there. And you can use a color if you want a color. doesn't matter. And I'm going to cut my pillow off about there. And I want to cut it the same amount on the other end, which is quite as wide as my thumb. There. So, that one's cut a little shorter, so I'll cut this one off more. Now, we have a pillow. Alright, so it's time. I almost forgot that we need to put the bed together. We need to put these posts on. And when I got in to put the posts on to get them ready, I noticed something. One of them, three of them are great. Three of them have their little ends that go in these, that go down in these holes. But number four doesn't. It was broken off. So what I did was I just took a small drill and I drilled a hole big enough for a toothpick to go in. I drilled it up. I very carefully did it with one of those little hand pin vise drills. And I need to cut the very end off this toothpick. And glue that in there like that. Now let's see how far down does this hole go. Okay, it goes about that far. So, this will need to be, we need some glue. I'm just putting it out on my tile. I like to just put my glue out on the tile and then when I'm when it's all dried up and I'm done working, I just scrape it off with a uh, scraper. So, we are going to put a drop of super glue. Let's see if I can get this. Let's get the bed out of the way. That would make more sense, huh? Okay. And I did kind of take a notch out of this, but that's okay. It'll be fine. Drop a super glue down there. Dip this in the glue. Now we are just going to stick that in like that. Now I need to cut this off where it sticks out approximately well, long enough that it can go down into the bed. Now, be careful when you're working with that super glue that you don't glue your fingers together. Now, let's double check. That's going to fit just fine. So, we'll glue that toothpick. Dip the toothpick in the glue. And we'll I'm going to drop the glue down in there. Hold it still. And it does help to have a wet wipe handy to get the glue off your fingers. And any excess glue. And we'll do the same thing with these that were not broken. Dip that in the glue. And remember, if you get, it, you get the glue on here first and let it sit, it will... Um, will become a little more sticky. So just put the glue down in these two spots first. Super glue will stay open for a while. You don't have forever, but it doesn't dry immediately. And I'd rather have too much glue and have it ooze out that way I know that I've got glue in contact, then not have enough and find out later when it comes apart. Now when that patched end, when that post dries, if I see any of the bare wood, 
I will simply find a craft paint that is close to this color as I have as I can find and patch it. But there are there's our bed. It's all done. You can kind of fiddle with these strings, make them look a little more natural. I will probably get these strings wet later and put so they lay better, but I'll take some photos of the bed and um, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's kind of a long video, but we covered a lot of stuff. I hope you learned some things and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, and be sure to check the blog post. I'll have the measurements for the fabric for all the pillows and all those things will be on the blog post. So be sure and check that. But I hope you learned some things that you can use and I'll talk to you later. Bye.